In this video, we're talking about how to sketch polar curves. And in this particular example, we're going to be sketching a cardioid. And the equation we've been given is r is equal to 2 plus 2 cosine of theta. Now, we don't have to know that it's a cardioid in order to sketch it. All we have to do is recognize that we have this trig function here, cosine theta. We always want to, this is a trick we always use, we always want to take the argument inside that trig function, in this case it's theta, and we want to set this equal to pi over 2. The reason this trick works is because it's going to make it really easy for us to evaluate this equation at different values. Now normally we would say, once we've got this set up, we need to solve this equation for theta. But because the argument wasn't any more complicated than theta itself, of course this equation is already solved for theta. So now that we've got it solved for theta, we take this value here on the right hand side, obviously pi over 2, and we want to mark off our theta axis in increments of pi over 2 starting at 0. So we always start at 0, then we would say 1 pi over 2 is pi over 2, 2 pi over 2 is pi, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2 is 2 pi, 5 pi over 2, 6 pi over 2 is 3 pi, 7 pi over 2, and we could keep going, but that should be plenty. Okay, so once we've done that, now we want to take all these values that we just wrote down, including 0, and we want to evaluate the original equation at those values. So we'll start by plugging 0 into this equation. Cosine of 0 is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. So we'll go ahead and say that at 0 we have an, a value for r of 4. So we'll go ahead and call this right here 4. And we'll call this about negative 4 here. Okay, so we have 0, 4. Now we want to plug in pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. 0 plus 2 is 2. So we get a value here about 2. Plugging in pi, we get cosine of pi, which is negative 1. Negative 1 times 2 is a negative 2. 2 minus 2 gives us 0, so we end up right here at 0. Plugging in 3 pi over 2, we get cosine of 3 pi over 2, which is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. 0 plus 2 is 2. So we get this point right here. And then plugging in 2 pi, we get cosine of 2 pi, which is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. So we get this point right here. And now notice that we're back to where we started. We're back to 4, which was the first point that we plotted. This pattern will continue to repeat itself. We could double check ourselves. We could evaluate at all these values. But what we want to do now is sketch a smooth curve that connects these points like this. And if we evaluated or if we could tell by the pattern, we could see that the curve is going to continue to follow this same pattern like so. So now once we've got this smooth curve sketched out on these axes, we want to translate it to polar coordinate axes. So what we do is we'll call this the angle 0, the angle pi over 2, this is the angle pi, this is the angle 3 pi over 2, and then one full rotation gets us all the way back to 2 pi radians. We always want to mark off our polar coordinate axes in the increments we found here, but these increments were just increments of pi over 2, so all we have to do is mark these major axes. And now we just want to sketch this. So at the angle 0, we're out a distance from the origin of 4 units. So if we go ahead and say that this is 4 here, we can say at the angle 0, which is along the positive direction of the x-axis here, at the angle 0, we're out a distance of 4. So we plot that point. Now we're working on this section right here. So as we head toward the angle pi over 2, the angle pi over 2 here, we get to a distance of 2 out from the origin. So we're starting here, we're heading toward pi over 2, and when we get to pi over 2, when we hit this line, we want to be out a distance of 2 from the origin. So if this is 4, then probably right about here, something like this, is 2. Then as we head from pi over 2 down to pi, so as we head from pi over 2 down to pi, we get to a distance of 0, which means we're going to be right at the origin. So as we head from pi over 2 down to pi, we're going to curl back and hit the origin here. Then as we head from pi to 3 pi over 2, we're going to get back out to a distance of 2. So again, back out to something like this. And then as we curl from 3 pi over 2 back to 2 pi, 
we get out to a distance of four. Whenever you see the pattern of points like this, you know it's a cardioid. And a cardioid is a heart-shaped curve. And you can remember that because cardiac is a root word for everything heart-related. So cardioid is heart-related, it's a heart-shaped curve. So because we know now that it's a cardioid based on these points, what we can do is sketch the curve. It comes over the top of this point, curls back in here, and then pops back out to this point, comes down around to form the curve this way. And if we continued to follow this curve, what we would notice is that we get back to this point positive four right here, and then we just continue to follow the same pattern around the curve this way. And we trace the curve over and over again without drawing any new section. So that's how you sketch a polar curve when the polar curve is a cardioid. Could you use some extra help with math? Click the button to head over to calculusexpert.com. It's where I've collected and organized all of my best resources, including exclusive videos, notes, quizzes, and even formula sheets. It's the perfect resource whether you're struggling, or if you want to take your learning further, or even if you just want to save yourself some time studying. So check it out, because I know it'll help.